Hey, and welcome back to Witch Alone's podcast. I'm your hostess, Danielle, and we'll be continuing with the mini series on the tools of the trade, talking about incense. Out of all the altar tools, there is only a couple that you can truly make yourself from scratch. Your wand, the pentacle, and incense. I'm sure some people would argue you can make candles by yourself, but you still need a lot of extra tools for that. And when I talk about making incense from scratch, I don't mean the incense sticks. I mean loose incense. Which depending on how much research you've actually done, you may not even know loose incense exists, because I sure didn't. First off, let's talk about the element. Incense can be linked both with the fire and air elements. Fire because, well, you have to light something on fire to acquire the smoke. And air from said rising smoke. Most witches I have talked to associate it with air because there are multiple tools you could have on your altar that can be more closely associated with fire, like candles. All the elements are cleansing in their own ways, and air and incense is no exception. We're most familiar with the smoke that rises from cleansing sage bundles, but the smoke that rises from incense can do the same thing in a more centralized area. There are two main types of incense, indirect burning and direct burning. Within these two types are subsets of incense. The one that is sold virtually everywhere, even major outlets like Walmart, is the direct burning type of incense. Direct burning means it must be physically set on fire for it to work properly, such as an incense stick. Cord sticks usually have a supportive core like bamboo or sandalwood, and the incense is packed around it, with the whole stick burning away. There is also a solid incense stick, that has no core, it's simply hard packed incense in the shape of a stick and can be broken in length depending on how long you want it to burn. Coned incense is part of this subset, where there is no core and the incense is packed into a cone shape, where it is then lit and let down to burn. Other types of direct burning incense comes in paper, powder, rope, and coil forms. Indirect burning incense is a type of incense that does not need to be physically lit on fire, but more so just being placed onto a heat source to smoke. In order to successfully burn this type of incense, you will need a heat source, most commonly that is charcoal, and a dish to heat it in. Any heat resistant dish will do, but if you're looking for something that is quote unquote proper, you'd be looking for a sensor. There are three subsets to this incense. Whole, powdered, or paste. Whole incense is when you take the herb and without doing anything to it like grinding it, you place it directly on hot coals. Powdered is as titled, taking the herbs and grinding them into a finer powder. Paste is when you take that powdered incense and mix it in a non-combustible binder like honey or a softer resin herb. The nice thing about loose incense is that you can put together any variation of herbs to create something specific to you or your intentions, provided the herb is not poisonous if breathed in. You can also pre-make large amounts of your own incense for specific moons or sabbats and keep them in a tight fitting jar. The convenience surrounding the stick incense is that you can get them virtually anywhere from major department stores to hole in the wall occult stores. The only thing is that you don't always know where the ingredients truly originated. I would like to say that everyone should be concerned about where the ingredients came from and to keep things in mind like fair trade, but again there is a price tag on that. Is it worth it? Definitely. Not only are you helping the right people, but you have confidence in where your ingredients are coming from. Is it always in the budget? Not so much. A lot of my incense sticks came from the dollar store when I was first starting out for convenience. And at 14, 15, 16 in the early 2000s, thinking about fair trade and ingredient cultivation wasn't really high on my list. I just wanted to do my spells. Incense is another tool that isn't specific to witchcraft, as it's been seen as a cleanser and protecting tool for hundreds of years. Sensors and loose incense seem to be the main form in multiple cultures. If you're having a hard time picturing a sensor, it's probably because they can come in so many different shapes and sizes, and it's not the first thing people go to these days when using incense. In the Catholic Church, it looks like a diamond-shaped dish with rounded corners that sits on a stand and opens horizontally in the middle. You would put your hot coals inside, place the loose incense in, and then close the lid. The lid had small holes that allowed the smoke to rise from it, 
and there was usually a chain on it to swing back and forth in rituals or for cleansing. In Chinese, Japanese, Middle Eastern, and Hindu uses, the censer varied immensely. It could look like a small urn with holes in it, to a bowl with a small lid, to the shape of any animal that was sacred to that cultural background. Incense, unlike scented candles, are a little safer to start and leave unattended because there is no open flame. I should point out that you really shouldn't leave anything that is smoking or flaming unattended, just in case the ashes get blown onto something that is flammable and they are still hot enough to ignite it. But in the general sense, they are a little safer than an open flame. If you don't want the room to smell severely of that particular incense for hours or days, try and pick a room with a window. Unfortunately, those practicing in the broom closet means that using incense of any kind is very difficult because not only does it give off a certain smell, it still inhabits the scent of smoke from the fact that it is burning. A good way to include the element of air into your practice if you can't use incense is simply to find a feather as birds are great symbols of their element. If you are looking for the scent of a particular incense to help you set intentions or the mood of a ritual, try and find a hand cream or an essential oil with the scent you desire, as something like that is much easier to play off should you need to. Even a body wash with the scent you want could work when you perform a cleansing bath or shower beforehand. Choosing your incense depends on what you need it for. Lots of deities will have their own list of scents associated with them, so if you are creating a deity altar, make sure you have the right incense. For myself, my deity altar is dedicated to Thor and Freya. The scent I chose from Freya's list was Rose, and the one from Thor's list was Dragon's Blood, and they each have their own incense holder. Sabbats all have lists of incense or scents that are associated with them, and this makes it easy to figure out which one to buy or burn, and gives you many options in case you don't like a certain smell. I very rarely see vanilla on any of those lists, but if I did, I would stay away from it because the smell automatically gives me a headache. Do your research before buying for both use and background, and don't worry if you don't use all the sticks or incense right away. The sticks and dried herbs will last a very long time, years even, if stored in the proper way. That brings us to the end of this episode. This will be a bi-weekly podcast, so make sure to subscribe and turn your notifications on. The next episode will be the last one on the tools of the trade, and we'll be going over miscellaneous altar tools you can include into your practice. This episode was brought to you by the tarot card, Strength. The Strength card is the 11th card in the Major Arcana, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Usually depicting a lion somewhere on the card, it reminds you that you have all the strength within you, and don't be afraid to let out your inner lion. Let the world hear your voice, and trust in your inner strength. The lion doesn't waver. It knows that it is strong, so channel that energy. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, swing by my page under the same handle at which alone. And if you follow, make sure you say hi and let me know where you're listening from. I love meeting new followers. Until next episode, blessed be.